we've been having those discussions and it doesn't seem to be having any effect. Thank you for that. Um, could I just bring in Assembly Member Berry? <coughs> Thank you very much, Chair. Um, so I wanted to come back to the question, a uh, question about the, the, the new allocation of funding to estate regeneration since you brought it up, Tom. Um, so can I get this clear? This, this is, I mean, this actually mirrors what you said just now, mirrors a, an answer you gave to Assembly Member Bailey in a, in a written question, which is 2023-3379, if you wanted to look that up. <coughs> In September, but it says the same thing as, as, as roughly what you just said. Um, and so, for clarity, the one billion pounds is not new money. No. It's just differently no. allocated money it, it, from it, the existing pot. To be very, very clear, in M Michael Gove in, in his speech, uh, uh, I mean, he, he, it was said in a way that suggested it was new money, but it's not. It's yeah, simply that's, that's the remainder that we didn't allocate yeah. in the first bidding round. If you remember, we allocated 87% right. or something like that in the first right. bidding round. Okay, so so my question, I mean, in, in the, in the, you, you're still asking for more money to make a new right to buy back fund. So that money that they've said for a state of is not going into right to buy back or conversions, as Fiona was talking about. Um, and, but it, but you have managed, and you already had quite a loose definition of what's obsolete, essentially. I mean, I, I've been talking to you about this. Any any council can say these homes are obsolete and claim for the, the previously quite restricted obsolete homes grants. But you've now completely relaxed that so that any estate regeneration that's the demolition and replacement can claim a full grant. Uh, so I, that's that's right, isn't it? Within the one billion. Can I clarify? Go on. So uh, within the program, there is now originally there was a 10% cap on yeah. acquisitions unless the homes were obsolete. That acquisitions cap is now 30%. However, acquisitions of second-hand homes is still at 10%. So the the between between 10 and 30%, that could be acquisitions of off-the-shelf. You know, developer builds a block, and it's a new build, and it's converted over into uh, affordable. Second-hand homes is still that acquisitions cap within the program uh, of 10%, unless the homes are up. Okay, so 20% so of the whole program can now go on demolition and rebuild as part of estate regeneration. Uh, where did the 20% come from? You said it was 30% acquisitions and 10% was limited the, to the by the supply side. So, of so, so it's 10%. 10 10% within that 30%. That. that so 10% of the program is for second-hand acquisition. Yeah, so On top of that, there's another 20 that could be used for off-the-peg, which would not be used for estate regeneration, because that's just buying new build blocks and converting them into affordable, which is you know, quite standard practice. OK, so that's, that's a bit better, because the, the worry for me with estate regeneration, and I think you agree with me, when you first had this new restriction on um, subsidizing homes that were not net new <laughs> this was this was welcomed by you welcomed by me as something that would would ensure that we were genuinely getting net new council homes and the worry i have with sub putting more of the existing money into estate regeneration is that you'll be losing a home and replacing it and it might be a bigger home it might be a nicer home it, you might have a balcony now but still that's a that's zero that's net, net neutral whereas the the acquisitions that, that we're talking about or the conversions are their existing homes so they're not new homes but they are new council homes new social homes but the building of new homes that's 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 even better because that's net new ho a new home and net a social home so you're you're what you're doing and with those three options you're putting more of the existing money into the worst of those three options so that's going to bring down the new council housing we get out of this scheme, is it not? I mean, I know you put a good spin no, on I, it, but I, that's the result. I, I don't agree with you, and you sort of already touched on it, because when these homes are being replaced, they are being replaced with new modern homes that meet modern space standards. So if you look at the actual, we th it, we, too often we think of um, things in terms of units. Well, what we're delivering here is actually more council housing, even if it's uh, uh, a replacement unit, because generally you're replacing with higher levels of force. I mean, at a very <laughs> minimum level, it has to be the same level of floor space because that's what's required under the uh, mayor's, uh, uh, that's what's required in the London plan. Uh, but usually what we see is, is a big increase in, in floor space. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's uh, because delivery partners are replacing small, obsolete units, small, well, that we would consider to be obsolete now, I think, that we wouldn't build today. And I know a lot of the residents don't today. consider them to be obsolete. This is part of my problem. And the other, can I just add something as well? The other thing, and you, you've heard uh, Fiona and our other panellists speak very 
uh, clearly about the uh, costs of maintenance and repairs and, and things like that. I think housing associations and councils need to you know, look very strategically at the stock that they've got. What is it worth investing in, retrofitting, uh, doing infill on, maybe top hatting, that kind of thing? What's it worth doing that to? Uh, and what actually uh, is, it, is it better, uh, uh, in, you know, uh, given the, the, you know, some of the stock is reaching the end of its useful life, really, to, to rebuild? And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I wouldn't want our partners to be diverting lots of funding into, into homes that really aren't that great to live in uh, and, you know, have reached the end of their useful, um, useful life. Okay, so there's three things I want you to go away and come back to us with in terms of the impacts of this, because what you haven't mentioned in, in extolling the virtues of replacing a home is the time that home is out of action, mm -hmm. because the, the homelessness that, that Hakeem talked about isn't solved, in fact, is made worse. There's additional pressure on the housing waiting lists while a home is demolished because those people need to be decanted. Uh, uh, assembly member, um, can we, can so, I'd like you, so I'd like you to go away and come back to us with a, with a figure of additional opportunity cost within the housing programme from this change. I'd also like you to go and get a view from the London Housing Panel on this because I don't believe they were asked in advance of making this change, although it, obviously it came from the top down, but I'd like you to get their views and put them on record. And the third thing I'd like you to do is look at the, the change in the carbon impact of the programme as a whole for, between what it was before and what it is with this additional demolition, because I think it will have gone up, and I don't think that's the right thing to be doing at the moment either. Can I, can I say on, on, on your first, just, just on your first point, and we'll, we'll come back and write to this on, on the others, uh, in terms of um, uh, homes being out of action, I mean, the best practice, and this is not always possible, but the best practice for estate regen, as we know, uh, is for a new block to be built, residents to be moved in, and then the old block to be taken down. Not always possible, not always practical, but that's the best, the, the, you know, best practice. So it's not necessarily the case that that, that um, you know a block is removed and then it's a long wait before new homes are built to replace it. Okay, thank you. I'm done, Chair. As long as we've got a commitment to come back to us on this. We, we'll, we'll, I mean, I'm sure as as ever the assembly will be diligent in writing to me with a list of questions that members have that we couldn't answer today. Uh, thank you very much yeah. for that, Deputy Mayor. Um, we're going to take a two-minute adjournment so myself and the Deputy Chair can swap seats. Thank you.